Alright, old rickety elevator, welcome to Old Aperture, ladies and gentlemen. Up, we're gonna have a superconductor turned up full blast and pointed at you for the duration of this next test. I'll be honest, we're throwing science at the wall here to see what sticks. No idea what it'll do. Probably nothing. Best case scenario, you might get some superpowers. Worst case, some tumors, which we'll cut out. Fair enough. Alright, welcome back to PA's Perpetual Testing, Day 68. Today we're looking at Echoes. By Color Cube Man. I'm assuming I can't pass through these grids, yeah, but portals can, so. Another one of the hard bridge sort of levels. Oh, old style aerial faith plate. Very nice, very nice. I didn't actually know that they looked like that, but sure, we'll roll with it. And what can I get today? I can get some bounce gel, which can probably go through the solid field, right? I'm the only thing that can't? Yeah, there we go. Ah, and that deactivates the solid field for a couple of seconds. Good, good, excellent. So, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> I mean, I'll head back across. I think it's pretty obvious that I'm supposed to do that, but... Alright, stay clear of the old-style aerial faith plate. Where am I supposed to go? We have... Well, we have some sort of wall here, but I don't think there's any room above it. We have a wall here, but that doesn't really do much except let me get back across. We have the exit which I can bounce to using the bounce gel. I'm not a clever man some days. Alright, so... Uh, this just in, Summer Games Done Quick 2012, still ongoing. You should still go donate, if you haven't done so already. It's actually going on until the 27th of the month, so just uh, go give it a look. See if you can uh, help out in any way, shape, or form. It's always appreciated whenever you can. And I actually, I watched the Quest 64 run a couple of days ago. I, For some reason, that I always really liked that game as a kid. Just looking at it, like I always thought Quest 64 looked like the coolest game of all time sort of thing. But I was never quite- oh, I'm going to have to place Bounce Gel there, aren't I? But I never really found myself actually being able to play it. Also, apparently it wasn't a great game. I always thought it looked cool, though. I mean, come on, I was, like, I, mean, I was just one of them youngins. I had no idea what I was talking about, but it still looked like fun when I looked at it in the past. And heck, it sounds like it probably might have been fun, but it had nearly no story or anything like that. And that's, I don't know, I'm I'm kind of torn on games without story. It's like, if the gameplay can hold up without a story, then if you just have an excuse plot, then you should be fine. I mean, take games like Dota 2, for example. They're built about around being multiplayer games. There's little to no story there. But what story is there is actually quite interesting, and I like reading it. It's just, you don't really get much of it because it's not necessary. Whereas in other games, the story is supposed to be the primary draw, and it kind of fails at that aspect. I brought up Remember Me in the past, and I'm going to bring it up again, because... The average human male is about 60% water. As far as we're concerned, that's a little extravagant. So if you feel a bit dehydrated in this next test, that's normal. We're going to hit you with some jet engines and see if we can't get you down to 20 or 30%. Great. But, um, Remember Me was a game I played recently where I was like, Hey, I heard that this game sounds really cool and I think I want to try it out and all sorts of fun jazz. And then I actually tried out the game and it pretty much turned out to be... I'm not gonna lie, it was, was alright but completely unmemorable. Alright, so what's this? The exit? Okay, so I'm going to need to get back there way later, but not quite yet. In fact, what I definitely need access to is that there, but how would I access that panel there as well as get over there to place the proper... Hmm. Well, I think the first priority here is going to be finding a cube. 
But yeah, remember me. Like, it was, it was... The writing was a bit cheesy. I predicted the twist ending about halfway through. Actually, no. I predicted the twist ending about a couple of minutes in, but... It was just one of those situations where I was kind of like keeping my fingers crossed that I wasn't right. You ever have one of those where you think that you've got it, but that's just so dumb that you're hoping that they'll surprise you and do something else? It was one of those sorts of moments. So what am I supposed to access from up here? I've got access to... I mean, I have access to a fling platform of some sort. I could drop a cube through here, which will would allow me to fling it to somewhere that I need it to go, but... I don't know, I don't see much else here. I still need to find that cube, wherever it is. Oh, but wait a second, there's an activatable panel up there of some sort. What does that activate? Does it deactivate the movement field? I think it does. It deactivates the uh, hard light that stops me from going through. Cause I mean that is pretty much just a hard light bridge. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna kid myself over that. That's what it is. Or it's using the same sort of idea as a hard light bridge, except it lets items pass through instead. But what do I need to Okay, so the cube is up there, so if I could find out some way to accelerate myself through here, that would work. So how can I get the acceleration necessary to get up there while keeping one of my portals there? Hmm. Well, I could place my orange portal somewhere like... There, and then hope that I could get up there, but I have no way of getting up there. Is really the issue. I could place it there, but I wouldn't really have any means of getting over there either. Maybe if I... Hmm. Because I don't think that shooting your portal and then quickly moving back through it works anymore. That was that was a portal one trick. That's not going to keep relevant here, or keep being relevant here. If there was some sort of way I could get up, that would be amazing, but there's no way for me to get up this area without... Oh, there we go. I have to fling myself through onto the ground, like this. And while I'm up in the air, I have to place my blue portal there and fling myself across. There we go. Conservation of momentum. Easy. And something I really should have realized sooner in this test. But you know what? That will happen. Occasionally, there are going to be tests where you're just thinking to yourself, I really should have gotten that a bit earlier. So now I can actually fling myself up there using this same aerial faith plate from earlier and find what? I've got a portable surface and a button and that's it. Sure, we'll roll with it. What does the button do? Deactivates that and that. Okay. Ah, I see. Okay. First off, I'm going to need to grab that portal. So... Or that portal. <laughs> yes, I need to grab that portal. No, I need to grab that cube. Then I need to place the cube up here. And... Wait, can the cube rest on this? Oh, it can. It's actually exactly a hard light bridge. So I place the cube on there. So I've got that. And then I need a blue portal. Ah, shoot. Oh, no, wait, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I can still do this. I need a blue portal, because that's why I need to travel back through, right there. Then aerial faith plate through. Then I'm going to need my orange portal to be right there, so I can fire the cube through. Cube will drop, flings through, emancipation grid stays deactivated for just long enough, and that's it. Bing, bang, boom, done. On to getting me through, but we figured that out about a minute into the test. It was just a matter of finding that cube. So, aerial faith plate through here on the button, and uh, is there a third test chamber in this map? Doesn't appear so. Sad times. But yeah. Just, story is optional, overall. Um, if the gameplay holds up to it. And I kind of picked up, I'm going to talk about this just really briefly, 
uh, in the post. But this has been the end of the map. So if uh, you're just here for the Portal 2, I'll see you tomorrow. If you want well, listen to me ramble for a second longer, though. Remember me, I got it because I heard that it had a customizable combat system, not unlike God Hand, which is a game for the PS2 that I really wanted to play, but I never had a P- or PS- I think it was for the PS2. But I never had a PS2, and I was never able to get God Hand, I was never able to find anyone that had it, so that kind of got nixed before it even began, which is kind of a pain. But with that said, God Hand was a game with an extremely customizable combat system, and it seemed like a great personality behind it. And while Remember Me does have a similarly customizable combat system, and I say similarly customizable because it's not the same completely, but it does have the same idea of using different combinations of attacks, it, I mean, I got into it hoping that I would find something that would be a poor man's God Hand, almost, but... What I found out was that the combination system in Remember Me was nothing like the one in God Hand, though that isn't to say it wasn't unique and interesting in its own aspect, but the characters and the story and pretty much everything else were a good idea executed poorly, I think. There were way too few of the memory remixings, which seemed to be one of the primary draws of the game, and then there were there are, there was much too much of just fighting random people with the customizable combat system, which, while cool, didn't really seem to pop as much as it could. It was pretty much just, by the end of the game, it was, what's that, here's an enemy that hurts you every time you hit him, okay, equip equip a couple other things that heal you every time you hit something and just keep hitting him with those until he falls down. Very tedious. And if you use your special abilities and special powers, and that's all right. And then it had lots of pickups, random pickups, that were just like, find the place listed in this photo, and from then on you're pretty much just playing I Spy with the game. So, what I'm trying to say is that it can have little to no story, like Dota, or like, hell, even God Hand didn't have much. No, God Hand actually had a great story, now that I think of it. That doesn't work. What was a great game that had very little story? Or a very bad story? Hmm... I'm sure I'll think of something. I'll come back with it tomorrow. But, uh, just overall, I think that games can definitely succeed without solid stories behind them. And I think that the fact that Portal 2 maps are able to do as well as they are is just test, is a testament to um, the fact that you really don't need any sort of story to make things excellent. But when we do get story maps, they're sort of interesting. Oh well, you know what, that'll happen from time to time, but in any case, this has been PA's Perpetual Testing and PA's Perpetual Rambling, it seems, and I'll see you all tomorrow.